Corn, also known as the Blood God and the Taker of Skulls, is one of the gods of chaos who reigns over blood, war, and slaughter. He embodies the most primitive and brutal emotions and actions of sentient beings such as hatred, anger, wrath, war, and murder. Corn, the Blood God, the Lord of Rage, the Taker of Skulls, he is the incarnation of fury, the embodiment of an insatiable thirst for dominance and destruction. What Korn desires most is to drown the galaxy in a tidal wave of carnage, to conquer and kill all living things until nothing remains but spilled blood and shattered bones. Every act of killing in the material universe feeds Korn and bestows upon him power. The more senseless and destructive, the better. However, while Korn is the god of bloody slaughter, he is also a god of martial pride and honor, patronizing those who stand against the most dangerous foes and triumph despite all odds. A follower of Korn could be a noble hero on the battlefield, as well as a deranged, bloodthirsty executioner. The Kornates do not make an art of killing. They aim to deprive of life, not to inflict pain. Though the blood and death of their victims strengthen Korn, their suffering empowers his sworn enemy, Slanesh. The name Korn originates from Karneth, a name of the god in dark tongue, the language of chaos meaning Lord of Rage or Lord of Blood. Korn is the most powerful and the eldest among the four major gods of chaos, for he fully emerged into the Immaterium around the time of the Terra's Middle Ages in the early second millennium. His birth heralded an era of wars and conflicts that raged across the planet. The laws of Korn are simple, blood and blood again. His only temple is the battlefield, the only sacred offering he accepts is the spilled blood of nations. Whether knowingly or not, every warrior culture pays homage to the blood god with their killings and destruction. From the head-hunting tribes of backwater feral worlds to the planet-conquering chaos space marine warbands of the World Eater's Traitor Legion. Every life taken in rage amplifies the might of the Blood God. He looks favorably upon those warriors who slay both foes and allies, for they demonstrate an understanding of a grand truth. Corn cares not from whence the blood flows, only that it does. Friends or foes, all dead, are equal in the eyes of the Lord of Battles. But those followers who allow themselves a day without brutal, bloody slaying inevitably draw upon themselves the Blood God's disfavor. It is said that Korn inherited martial nobility and honor and considers the weak and helpless unworthy of his wrath. The battle cry of Korn's followers reflects his penchant for savage violence. Blood for the blood god, skulls for the throne of Korn. Alternatively, they may cry, skulls for the skull throne. Embroiled in fits of savagery, the servants of the blood god may cry out, kill, maim, burn, repeating these words as they dismember their enemies. Furthermore, Korn's berserkers, known as Korn's Chosen, often roar, break their backs amid fierce, bloody battles which they so fervently crave. The sacred number of Korn is eight. This is reflected in the organization of the demonic armies and matters as minute as the number of syllables in demonic names. Warriors of the Blood God always form squads of eight fighters whenever possible. The primary colors of Korn are blood red, black, and brass. Also, note that the mark of Korn remotely resembles an eight or a stylized human skull. It is said that he is the god of war, whose roar of insatiable rage echoes through time and space even before its formation in the warp, and pertains to the very first act of violence committed by one mortal against another. Devotees of the ruinous powers have for millennia waged fierce disputes about the origin of the blood god. Some believe that it was the will of Korn that compelled the primitive man to pick up a stone and crush the head of his companion in a fit of bloodthirsty rage, marking the first turn of the spiral of violence that fed the Chaos God and made him a formidable force now influencing the entire galaxy. Others argue that the life in Korn was breathed by the first gusts of mortals' furious emotions and he embodies the primitive thirst for violence that lurks in the heart of every living being. Nonetheless, True followers of Korn do not care for these debates, for they fully devote themselves to the slaughter of anything that comes their way. The sources of conflict are as numerous as the beings in the universe. Envy, wrath, anger, sport, hunger, political advantage, territory, property, or even the simple innate thirst for dominance 
all inevitably generate and amplify conflicts. Wars have always been everywhere. Even those races that claim they are enlightened and peaceful cannot escape the fundamental truth that without conflict their progress would cease and new complex ideas would remain unheeded. Not only simple personal confrontations lead to victims of conflicts and those who emerge victorious. On the grandest scales, systems of governance, even whole cultures and civilizations are destroyed by the stronger, often just as easily as a chaos space marine extends a power fist and crushes the fragile body of a grot. It is through conflict that the powerful ascend and the weak perish. At its most basic level, conflict is the survival of one at the expense of the destruction of another. Despite the obvious aspects of self-destruction, Korn is undoubtedly the mightiest and active of all the Chaos Gods. Endless wars and bloodshed in the world of mortals feed him with the skulls of the slain, which are drawn into the furious depths of the realm of the Blood God. Korn needs no sweet promises or cunning intrigues to lure mortals to him. The anger and rage hiding beneath their civilized demeanor are often more than enough for this. The path to the domains of Korn can be just as slippery as to the other more sophisticated ruinous powers. The instinct for violence is a necessity in a hostile universe and is exalted by defenders or liberators. Many societies are forced to fight for survival and they glorify their heroes for their ability to protect themselves and others. Korn is the embodiment of conflict at its most savage extreme, making him eternal and omnipresent. Korn's influence is felt everywhere, in every era and among every intelligent kind. The attention of the Blood God spares no hostile confrontation, from disputes between two enraged scribes to galaxy-splitting battles of the Horus heresy. Beyond the illusion of reality where mortals live and die, Korn touches upon the greatest war, sitting upon his skull throne. He advances conflicts and fosters their growth, urging men and women into rivalry and enmity. Corn kindles in their souls the fire of discord. Where expanding civilizations lay competing claims to newly found resources, the Blood God fans the flame of dissent. When one brother begins to envy the place of another, Corn heats his blood to a boiling point, and conflict arises. Property acquired, resources appropriated, brothers slain, through all this, blood flows to the Blood God, and he continues to laugh as his power grows. Worship of the God Corn takes many forms, and primitive human cultures have served Corn since the very first hunts and wars with neighbors. Many are even unaware that the God they revere is the same Blood God. Some don't even think of him as a deity. To them, he is a force of nature that must be tamed, or a spirit that must be persuaded to their side. In these cultures, Corn is usually depicted in the form of a mighty beast. Instead of a face, he has a snarling canine maw with flaming eyes stalking his prey. Assistance from such a spirit can guarantee a successful hunt or a bloody victory in a battle against another clan. Humans are not alone on this bloodied path. Corn can also bestow his favor on fierce orcs, despite them having their gods, Gork and Mork. Merciless Nikuli mercenaries, bloodthirsty Ratgol hunters, or indeed any warrior of any intelligent kind can serve the purposes of the Lord of Skulls. They need only offer their blood and skulls for him to fill their hands with his power and their hearts with fury. Even deep within Imperial space, some unwittingly worship corn. On Hive Worlds, gangs fight each other for territory and resources. Occasionally they recruit a deadly assassin to eliminate a particularly powerful leader of a rival gang. This assassin, sent by the decree of the lords of his temple, may beseech the divine hand to guide his dagger straight into the throat of his target. In praying for aid in such a killing, a priest assassin risks drawing the attention of Korn, the lord of murder. The priests of assassins might not know that their actions are leading them to serve Korn. These individuals could believe they are sacrificing to an entirely different entity, or they might simply not care to whom the bloodshed is devoted as long as their temple remains influential. Regardless, Korn offers his assistance, demanding blood as payment in return. No matter what drives the murderers, or whatever the circumstances, and regardless of how the blood god is known to them in name and form, one constant connection binds them all to him, blood. Furthermore, he craves bloodshed. In the killings, massacres, and wars, the servants of the blood god rend the flesh of their enemies, 
drenching the soil of countless worlds in crimson blood. And all this they do in honour of corn. Nothing pleases him more than the unrestrained, spilling life force of blood. It gives God strength, sustains him, and amplifies his influence. The servants of corn must ensure the flow of blood never ceases, for corn cares not from whence the blood flows, only that it does. A follower of the blood god who incurs his wrath due to failing to present his patron with enough blood will likely become the next sacrifice. His blood will be consumed, his soul devoured, and his skull tossed onto the immense mound of similar bones that surrounds the skull throne. Though the influence of corn is a steady tide of aggression, pushing the mortal world towards cruelty, murder and bloodletting, this is insufficient to quench the thirsting lord of battle. Insignificant, disjointed or weak actions cannot fill the rivers of his realm with blood or raise his throne higher up on the hill of skulls. This is too little to stoke the fire of boundless rage that burns within the very nature of his being. Corn demands slaughter on a planetary scale, the annihilation of entire species, and above all, perpetual battle. War constant, epic and merciless war is necessary to reap the blood and skulls needed to satisfy God's thirst. All intelligent species wage wars against their enemies, even those who favour unity and enlightenment. Those who do not voluntarily submit to the cause of the greater good are brought to heel by armed force. Killing begets killing. Blood demands blood. Devotion to corn is a life, no matter how long or short, comprised of days filled with fierce destruction. War is interrupted only by the need to gather strength, only for a new onslaught to follow. The servants of corn need neither justification nor purpose for war, for to them it is an act of glory in itself. To cleave a head with a chain axe and feel the blood splash onto the hand that wields it is a reward unto itself. They are inexplicably drawn to it. A single fury-filled man might kill a handful of people before falling himself. But when hundreds or thousands of such men gather, cities, planets and even galaxies tremble in fear. The armies of devoted followers of corn descend upon the planet with a singular purpose to harvest skulls and to spill blood. The demonic legions worshipping the blood god and comprising an immense number of warriors under their banners are bestowed with gigantic demonic war machines and a myriad of weapons of destructive power. The mortars of doom of these chosen forces unleash a rain of undertaker projectiles upon the terrified populace, while ranks of warriors frenziedly tear into the planet as though it were a living entity. Orbital defense systems are shattered, cities are razed to their foundations, and enemy machines are destroyed, clearing the path for the onset of serious slaughter. The havoc wrought by ranged weaponry is but the beginning, with true martial prowess, achievable only in close combat. Every kill ignites further carnage. No prisoners are taken, no life spared, corn brooks no mercy. As the streets turn to rivers of blood and bones are crushed under the march of the advancing, the armies of corn surge towards ever more grandiose feats of bloodletting. Pistols are holstered, giving way to chainswords and power axes. Blades are deeply plunged into the chests and necks of frightened enemy soldiers. The resistance of flesh fills with a grim satisfaction. Yet soon even this proves insufficient. The warriors of corn crave the warmth of freshly spilled blood as it flows out of their hearts directly onto their skin. They relish in violence, breaking enemies' limbs and rending their flesh with protruding bones. In such moments, Korn and his followers achieve a level of spiritual union such that the blood god experiences a sense of satisfaction. However, it quickly fades. As soon as it subsides, Korn roars in fury, urging his followers to regroup and prepare to strike at their next target. War never ends. It rages even within the Corn Estomane, where enemies seldom appear. Generals of the demonic armies, mighty and bloodthirsty, lead legions of bloodletters, fleshhounds and other demons into battle against each other. They hone their ferocious skills, even as they blunt their blades against the armor of other demons. Axes chop through unnatural flesh in an endless bacchanal of destruction. Limbs are severed, chests are impaled by horns, and faces are torn asunder by teeth and claws. When the battle draws to a close, 
The mutilated bodies of the fallen are trampled by the victors or cast into bottomless chasms. Peace reigns on the battlefield only until new legions are mustered. Then the war cry sounds anew and the conflict continues. Only the demon smiths, who toil in the forges, may rest from the conflicts. They craft weapons for the legions so that they might fight with them in the next battle, be it within the dominions of Khorne or in the material realm. Followers of Khorne are primarily comprised of blood-maddened berserkers, who care little for tactics or defense. Khorne disapproves of sorcery and magic, thus those who seek the arcane arts find themselves seeking patronage elsewhere. Unlike the followers of other Chaos Gods, the servants of Khorne do not expend much effort on constructing temples in his honor. Instead, they worship their god on the battlegrounds, praising him with war cries. Moreover, Khorne's followers also seek to gain his favor by aggressively attacking one another when no other battles are present, and sometimes even when they are. Serving Khorne is said to be easier than the other gods, for they demand rituals, altars, and sacrifices for worship, whereas the blood god requires only fresh blood and skulls from his servants. Those whom Khorne deems worthy often receive his blessings, mutations. Sometimes these physical alterations bestow great strength or a beast-like appearance. Some instill even greater terror such as horns, pincers and rending claws. Regardless of the nature of their mutations, the bearers proudly display these gifts, serving as visible proof of the blood god's existence and a source of inspiration for those yet to earn his favour. World Eater's traitor legion has wholly devoted itself to corn and his cause, the spilling of blood and slaying of their foes. However, the more one's soul is given to corn and marked by the stain of chaos, the more one is consumed by an uncontrollable thirst for blood, anger and fury, which can only be momentarily quenched by taking someone's life. Although Cornetes delight in the sensation of power, this bloodlust becomes increasingly difficult to control. To maintain any semblance of control, a warrior must commit the most monstrous acts of violence. Eventually, killing ceases to provide even fleeting satisfaction. Sooner or later, followers of Khorne transform into beasts filled with adrenaline and aggression. They will do anything for the sake of slaughter and the killing of living beings. The reasons for their actions eventually turn into a mindless desire for murder, violence and cruelty. Most Cornates sooner or later become berserkers of one kind or another. They prefer melee weapons over ranged ones, particularly axes, because they offer much more intuitive sensations in combat than firearms or directed energy weapons. The main issue with Cornate battle tactics is that there are none. They rely solely on their ferocity and prowess in close combat to stay alive long enough to reach their enemies and tear them to pieces. Usually, they succeed in doing so. The Blood God is usually depicted as a broad-shouldered and muscular humanoid, hundreds of feet tall. Khorne has the face of a fierce, snarling hound, but the God's twisted appearance is almost completely obscured by a grotesque helmet adorned with the skulls of King Conquerors. The gigantic stature of Khorne seems even more immense due to the powerful armor plates overlaid one upon another. This armor is forged from bronze and black iron, Every word from Khorne is a roar of endless rage, and his bloodthirsty cry, the howl of the Blood God, echoes throughout the realm. Khorne sits upon a brass throne, positioned atop a mountain of skulls. These monstrous trophies are none other than the fleshless heads of the Blood God's champions, piled together with the heads of their fallen foes. There rest the remains of hundreds of thousands of species, from countless human heads to tyranid skulls as large as a city-hive residential block. This ever-growing mound of blood-soaked bones represents the victories of his followers in the material world, fueling the glory of corn, yet never satisfying his thirst for blood and death. Besides the blood god rests a colossal two-handed sword, a legendary blade capable of shattering worlds with a single blow. Known by various names such as Woebringer, Warmaker, and the end of all things to different races of the galaxy, it is said that when Khorne wields this sword, with a single swipe he can cleave reality itself, allowing his demonic hordes to pour forth into the Materium. In most depictions, Khorne is seen holding a runic sword or axe, though in more primitive cultures, God is often portrayed with fists or claw-like hands alone.
It remains a mystery why corn is associated with the number eight, but this has been the case since the warp first resounded with God's fury. This number manifests within the realm of the blood god in the Immaterium. The brass citadel is surrounded by eight gigantic towers, and Cornate demons slain in the real space must complete eight tasks before Corn resurrects it. In the largest battles across the warp, the eighth wave of Corn is always the most powerful. Even the mortal followers know of the eight and revere it, utilizing it in their bloody rituals and carving it upon their flesh during horrific ceremonies. Seers of many races have prophesied that only after eight epochs of war will the bloodlust of corn finally be sated in the last apocalyptic battle. It is said that eight burning books of corn, bound in fresh blood-soaked brass, detail on their pages the eight unholy aspects of the blood god and contain the names of his greatest demons. These grimoires are sought after by sorcerers and even the Inquisition, for it is believed that knowing a demon's true name compels it to obey mortal commands. Acquiring these tomes is no easy task, for the burning books of corn are scattered throughout the universe. To possess such a tome, one must sacrifice everything, both mind and soul. Above all in the galaxy, corn harbors hatred and disdain for the chaos god Slanish, Prince of Chaos. The pursuit of earthly pleasures and the debauchery of the Prince of Chaos offend the martial instincts of Corn. The Battle Lord dreams of the day when he shall grasp with his crimson fingers the tender, gentle neck of Slanesh, tightening his grip until the depraved shrieks of pleasure from the young god turn into agonized howls, and then, at last, fall silent, accompanied by the crunch of divine bone. Duty, honor, and self-sacrifice, innate to the followers of Corn are anathema to the adepts of Slanesh and stand in direct opposition to their philosophy, a selfish thirst for pleasure. The demonic minions of Korn and Slanesh oftentimes assault one another, and their mortal followers join the fray with eager zeal. Korn holds no particular respect for Zinch, the arch-conspirator. Zinch champions are sorcerers and manipulators who strike from the shadows instead of in open battle. This difference in methods often fuels the disdain between the servants of both gods that leads to conflict. However, both chaos gods make common cause when the prospect for bloodletting is great and Zinch's unguessable schemes can be advanced through their mutual efforts. In such instances, the Star of Chaos rises higher in the realm of mortals and the two most powerful ruinous powers temporarily unite, leading their demonic legions to war. Such fickle alliances rarely last long, for the adherents of Korn and the manipulators of Zinch inevitably turn against one another. Even though the dominions of Korn in the realm of chaos consist of endless battlefields teeming with countless demons, these damned lands embody much more than mere blood-stained plains occupied by warring demons. Despair and cruelty become constant companions for those unfortunate souls who happen to be there even briefly. Each sinister, hellish landscape leads to another, darker than the previous. At the heart of these lands sits Corn, perched upon the Skull Throne, surveying his domains, pitting his forces against any foe that presents itself, be it other demons or reckless invaders seeking to bring a doomed war to the Battle Lord. This realm is unlike any other. In the crimson skies, storms rage constantly sending gales of hurricane force that seem to consist of pure fury. Sweeping across plains and mountains, the enraged winds bite into the very crust of the earth, tearing out vast slabs of stone and blood-saturated clods of soil, furiously hurling them back hundreds of leagues in explosions that unleash unbridled destruction. The earth, in turn, responds to the merciless assault of the heavens, Earthquakes eject streams of molten copper into the sky, scorching the storm clouds, momentarily quelling their fury until the winds gather once again to commence their onslaught anew. From the plains, in the blink of an eye, new mountains rise, some of which pierce the sky like gigantic living swords. While others serve as shields, safeguarding against the onslaught of storms, the infernal landscape is split by rivers of boiling blood, dividing the realm into territories where warring and bloodthirsty wage their war. But these sanguine streams are not created to allow conquered lands to rest in peace. From the depths below, new rivers erupt, cleaving the earth as effortlessly as an axe splits the swollen belly of a lazy bureaucrat. 
Each crimson flow drags everything that once resided in these territories, including the demonic legions marching upon them. The ground wages war as much with the heavens as with the rivers, forcing their banks to close. Volcanoes spewing copper hurl lava into the rivers, causing the blood within to evaporate and sealing wounds with blazing fury. Every fragment of this realm engages in a perpetual war of annihilation against each other. Each behaves as a living servant of corn, wishing to prove to the lord of these lands that they are worthy of a reward from the deity. Whoever visits this nightmarish reality will surely lose their mind, knowing that every stone, every gust of wind and every drop of what should be water is an enemy, wishing to kill him with the same eagerness, desire and cruelty as the countless demons of the blood god inhabiting these lands. A glance at the carnage in the realm of corn provides insight that conflict is a living, breathing entity, not merely a curse spawning troubles in the worlds of men, machines and aliens, it imparts the understanding of an eternal truth, which in turn leads to despair. On the furthest outskirts of these lands lies a circle of volcanoes, blasphemously named Corn's Rage. Reaching heights of hundreds of kilometers, they spew thick black smoke and molten copper into the heavens, creating an impenetrable barrier that cannot be seen through. The air there hangs heavy with darkness and ash, ominously illuminated by clumps of flame that incinerate the particulate matter falling on the volcanic slopes. In the clouds of ash, bloodstorms rage. Red lightning dances among the clouds, followed by the thunderous rolls of thunder. All of this resembles the crack of a bloodthirster's whip, followed by the sound of the hooves of thousands of charging juggernauts. These peaks serve as a bastion against invaders. Their poisonous ash and molten lava stop all but the most determined foes. Whoever is arrogant and foolish enough to attempt to cross the border encounters not just obstacles of fire and jagged rocks. The very might of Korn's rage rises to crush the attackers. Chunks of rock break off from the mountainsides, and molten copper flows over them like a hellish semblance of life-giving moisture. Demons of stone and liquid metal take form, born of fury and disobedience. Engulfed by thoughtless rage and genuine cruelty, they smash and burn their foes. Once they fulfill their grim task, they revert into lifeless heaps, waiting for a new call that will transform them and protect the boundaries of their master's domain. At the foot of the volcanoes lie the forges of the lesser demon smiths. In these fiery workshops, weapons of war are forged, all manner of axes, swords, hammers and armors which arm the endless wars of the blood god. Here, parts for the demonic engines of corn are also forged. The assembly of these war contraptions can take place anywhere, but the gears, blades, hulls and weaponry are produced right here, at the base of Korn's rage. Even by the standards of these realms, it is a perilous place. At any moment, a volcanic eruption could flood the forge with molten brass. Korn cares not if this incident incinerates several demons, for others will rise from the blood pits to take their place, and the forges will resume their work. Despite all risks, the demon smiths extract benefit from the danger of Korn's rage. On all battlefields, nearly only the servants of Korn fight and die, but at the borders of the realm, torturous, horrifying, bloody deaths await other warriors as well. Using tools and rituals so devilish that not even the most hardened sorcerers of chaos would dare to employ them, the masters of the Infernal Forges enslave the souls of mortals who invade the realm of the Blood God and meld them into the anvils of corn. The agonized screams of souls forever trapped within the anvils mix with the clangor and bang of the hammer. When a glowing piece of metal is laid upon the anvil's surface and a form is struck into it, the captured soul starts to feel the searing heat. Every new weapon or piece of armor created in the demonic forges is born to the sounds made by corn's enemies, suffering from the eternal wrath of God. In the realms of all the greater powers, worlds of warp energy, the primordial substance of chaos, constantly sweep through, its flow and swirling change and twist, seemingly at random, causing mutations in the very earth and in everything it touches. In most cases, this force does not linger long in one place. However, in the dangerous realm of the Blood God, there are places where the might of the warp accumulates and intensifies. When this happens, huge craters often appear on the ravaged plains. 
No one can say whether these pits form in moments or over millennia, for in the realm of chaos, time means nothing. Sooner or later, the warp storms disperse, and sometimes their energy seeps into the pits they created. In such cases, Korn commands his minions to use the most brutal, destructive and deadly methods possible, to increase the level of blood extraction from the realm of mortals. The souls that perish in such endeavours donate their blood for a special, dark purpose. Their crimson essence is gathered in the pit, where it mixes with molten brass and a portion of the murderous bile of Korn himself. The resulting lake has become the new blood pit. It is from the blood pits that the new demons of Korn rise. Bloodletters, furnace demons and many lesser monsters continuously emerge from the warp and blood mixed with bile, ready to fulfill any demand of their master. The warriors excreted by the pit are dispatched into battle, where from the day of their creation until the moment they fail their lord, they fight and procure even more blood to fill their pits. Eventually the pit dries, but soon after, a new storm arises, initiating the cycle of bloodshed anew. The realms of Korn's kingdom are separated from each other by rivers of blood, resembling jagged crimson scars on the scorched earth. These streams, spanning many kilometers in width, are filled with the blood of those who fell serving Korn, be they victims or followers. Almost all the blood spilled for the blood god flows through these blood-red channels, never ceasing to boil. Along the entire length of the rivers, a mist from the evaporating blood hangs, giving a red hue to all lands through which the river flows. Giant bubbles rise to the surface, which may contain the remains of those unlucky enough to fall into the boiling stream. When the bubbles burst, droplets of boiling blood are flung hundreds of feet into the air. When they fall back to the earth, they cover the banks in splatters that often resemble sprays from a severed artery. Thousands of blood rivers cut through the land and end their journey cascading down from a grim cliff in multi-kilometre waterfalls. The lake formed at the base of the wall is larger than any ocean in the world of mortals. It is inhabited by mythical creatures. Leviathans of brass and bone swim there, devouring everything in their path. Above the surface of the lake, bloodthirsters battle with dragons made of pure, solid blood. Anyone who comes too close to the surface risks being captured by the lake itself, which also craves slaughter. The waves rising on the surface take the form of warriors and conduct battles with all their ferocity, smashing each other and falling back into the lake in a rain of sprayed blood. The far shore of the Lake of Slaughter is littered with so many skulls that the original surface of the earth can no longer be touched. Ridges of skulls stretch from the lake for kilometers, and there, in the distance, rises a huge black wall. This is the outer wall of Korn's Brass Citadel. On the wall itself stand guards demons whose sight is as sharp as their fangs and swords. They keep watch for any potential invader, ready to protect their lord to the last. Beyond the walls patrol thousands of flesh hounds, sniffing out the scent of blood of those who might attempt to infiltrate. In the skies between the outer walls and the inner main tower, elite bloodthirsters soar, listening to the winds so as not to miss a single attempt of invasion. Few forces gather enough might to assault the brass citadel, and it is its guardians who deter any from storming it, except for the most foolish or fearless of Korn's enemies. Upon those who dare to besiege the brass citadel, the might of the blood god's close guard descends, whose fury and wrath threaten to tear a breach between the realms. Even if the brothers of Korn, the other gods of chaos, were to muster enough strength to overthrow the blood god in his fortress, the risk of a counter-invasion is too great. Starting such wars requires a truly serious reason. It is said that if Korn himself were to descend from his throne and personally wage war against the other dark gods, his favoured blade would slay them all with a single mighty sweep. But such an act would have catastrophic consequences that not even Zainch could predict. After the annihilation of an invading army of his brother gods, Korn does not unleash retribution upon them. When the threat vanishes, the blood god does not press the offence, but turns back to his inner sanctum and returns to the Skull Throne. At the very heart of the Brass Citadel, beyond the Bastion Stair and the Eight Iron Pillars, Korn watches over all his minions from his Throne of Skulls. From there, 
He commands his blood legions and mortal servants to bring war to the far corners of the galaxy. After every victory, God remains with an even greater bloodlust. And after every defeat, Korn claims the blood of the failed champion and adds it to the rivers of his realm. One way or another, Korn must have blood. If he must take it from his minions, so be it. The throne of skulls is surrounded by mountains of skulls, through which the blood god rises above his lands. Both champions and fallen enemies contribute to the bone pile. If these skulls could speak, some would tell tales of events that occurred even before the long war against the corpse emperor of the Imperium. That is, when Primarch Angron had not yet pledged his oath to the blood god. Others would recount the grim mistakes that led to the extinction of an entire race under the axes of the Berserker legions. The skulls lying closer to the god belonged to his most chosen champions, who perished serving their lord after hundreds of the fiercest campaigns. Tusker the Demon Killer. This name belongs to the Orc war boss, leader of an Orc war, who endlessly battles before the Brass Citadel, the heart of Korn's domains in the realm of chaos in the warp. The inaugural Orc invaders of the Immaterium captured the attention of the Blood God when assisted by the Weird Boys. They breached the boundary between the Warp and the material realm known as the Eye of Terror, in search of new carnage. Their wildly aggressive warboss, Tusker, self-styled Demon Killer, had already made his mark in the Eye, unleashing havoc upon several demon worlds dedicated to Korn's rivals. The Orc Warlord seemed unstoppable until his whirr was forced to land on a planet of flesh, owned by a mighty demon prince named Blood Prince, whom Korn held in high esteem. Enraged, the demon prince and his minions slaughtered the massive horde of the Greenskin Warlord to the last Orc. Yet, the Blood God was so amused by the murderous spectacle that at the dawn of the next day, he resurrected the Greenskin Crusade. This cycle repeated over and again, the orcs continued to fight fiercely, never surrendering nor showing signs of despair. Their insatiable hunger for battle greatly impressed the blood god, leading him to claim the orcs for his own. Every day, Korn's elite bloodletter generals battle against the immortal horde of Greenskins Tusker, the Demon Killer, in the shadow of the Brass Citadel. Every cycle, the dying Greenskins release vast clouds of fungal spores, which take root and grow in the blood-soaked foothills of the osseous peaks. More orcs are born, reaching maturity and throwing themselves into the fray once more. Such endless cycles of bloodshed are beloved by the blood god. After all, the only true constant in the galaxy is perpetual war. The blood god has seen to that. Of all the demons of chaos, it is the demons of corn that most embody the terrifying creatures often associated with the grim legends and myths of humankind. Horns, fangs, and flaming eyes speak volumes of their intent to kill, and the ferocity of these demons is indeed peerless. Only a fool would deal with the demons of corn without a ready supply of bloody sacrifices to offer in place of their own life. If a supplicant can evade death long enough, striking a deal is relatively simple, as these insatiable entities desire only to pounce upon any victim and joyously leap into battle at the first opportunity. The most martial among all Chaos God's armies is the Blood Legions of Korn. The demons of the Blood God are fierce and unbridled creatures, yet they adhere to a strict hierarchical structure based on sheer power. Korn's belief that only the strongest among his followers should dominate proved a simple yet immensely effective approach. Thanks to endless wars, the legions of the Blood God have carved out the largest domains in the Immaterium. In the brutal clash on the battlefield, the forces of Korn are unmatched by any other god. The strength and ferocity demonstrated by each of his demons define their rank in the armies of the Blood God. At the pinnacle of the hierarchy stand the Bloodthirsters. Each of them clad in grotesque armor and armed with a fearsome copper axe and whip, he is a demigod of warfare. Korn's greater demons would inspire terror even were they mere warriors and no more. Unfortunately for the enemies of the Skull Lord, this is not the case, for bloodthirsters are entrusted with leading the blood legions of their master into battle. With a raspy bark, they issue commands to the lesser demons around them, as well as assert their right to dominion and exhibit loyalty to Korn by overthrowing the most powerful of opponents. Being objects of reverential fear to the servants of the blood god, they often attract demonic champions to their retinue. 
who follow them into glorious combat. Each Blood Legion is divided into eight cohorts, which in turn consist of eight packs of demons, led by a Herald of Corn or Demon Prince. The specific composition of these cohorts, as well as the auxiliary force units and creatures that can fight alongside them, often depends on the type of Blood Legion to which they belong. For example, the Red Tide Legions are primarily composed of Bloodletter cohorts that overwhelm the enemy with waves of infantry attacks. So much death surrounds them that they are often followed by swarms of carrion-eating furies. The Hellfire Legions, on the other hand, are masters of siege, who prefer to engage the enemy at a distance and fight in the shadow of skull cannons, soul grinders, and during the most significant conflicts, giant demon engines called Lords of Skulls. The Brazen Thunder Legions are the most mobile armies of corn. The ground shakes under the onslaught of their blood thrones and blood crushers, while packs of flesh hounds chase down anyone who attempts to flee. Only corn knows how many types of blood legions exist. These formations may differ for many reasons, but the main ones are the influx of auxiliary forces, or the ebbs and flows of warp energy on the battlefield. Cohorts of corn servants often subdue demonic packs from other similar formations, appropriating them through force during fierce and sometimes ritualized infighting. Bloodletters, also known as Chosen of Corn, Warmonger of Corn, Slaughterkin, Taker of Skulls, Corn's Chosen, Teeth of Death and the Crimson Death are lesser demons, eager infantrymen in the ranks of Chaos God Corn's Blood Legions. Their host marches in formation with unnatural synchrony, but as soon as the battle commences, they strive to outdo each other in merciless brutality and violence. The majority of demonic hordes consist of these fierce bloodletters. These lesser demons are deadly warriors who in their mortal lives were the most outstanding followers of the blood god, whose will is as inexorable and bloodthirsty as Corn himself. Saliva-drooling, beast-like mouths of bloodletters are lined with sharp, needle-like teeth. Their scaly red skin barely conceals pulsating muscles. Knot-like muscles bestow upon the demons the strength with which they can pierce the strongest armor with their black, coal-like claws, making both armor and flesh a mockery. Although they possess a somewhat humanoid form, this is where their similarity with humans, Eldari, and orcs ends. Black horns protrude from the flesh on their heads, which in themselves are a merciless weapon. Bloodletters flick their black tongues over their teeth that have tasted the hearts of thousands of warriors across thousands of worlds, and this taste remains etched in the memory of every offspring. This might be guided by a killing instinct that surpasses the instinct of mortals. Bloodletters are unburdened with thoughts and desires. Save for reaping the lives of Corn's enemies and demanding skulls in the name of their divine master. They are armed with massive swords of warp metal known as Hellblades. These powerful, warp forged demonic blades can slice through the strongest armor. In rare instances, mortals defeat one of the demons in battle and claim this mighty weapon for themselves. The blade itself will never leave the hands of a living demon. It is said that within this weapon is imprisoned the essence of the demon. Hellblades are black, serrated metal swords, rimmed with the glow of red, smoldering embers. These swords are the physical embodiment of their wielder's pure bloodlust. Few mortals possess the willpower to wield such a weapon. However, the more blood the blade spills, the more powerful it becomes, and its glow begins to take on an even more crimson hue. Though bloodletters are not the most sophisticated of creatures, they are capable of cunning if it leads them to acquire even more skulls to offer to the blood god. Nonetheless, where other demons might flatter and entice to ensnare a mortal soul, only to torment it eternally in the realm of chaos, the most they can resort to is persuasion and deceit for a backstabbing strike. Acts of furious rage and bloody murders reverberate through the warp like a deafening drumbeat, a resonant echo calling the demons of corn to war. Countless ranks of bloodletters in the realm of chaos rush to the call. These stooped lesser demons eagerly join in the massacre, Filled with an insatiable thirst for blood, bloodletters are among the most aggressive beings in the warp. 
In simple terms, blood letters are cruelty and murder given physical form and purpose in the immaterium by the will of the blood god. Unlike foot soldiers, blood letters go to war in organized ranks, accompanied by an unbearable graveyard stench and proudly waving the blood-stained banners of the Lord of Battle. Though they can materialize from the war and even execute maneuvers without breaking rank, once they approach their prey, it becomes clear that they are barely restrained killers, thirsting for the blood of their enemies. Not without reason is the Blood Legion, at the centre of which are cohorts of bloodletters called the Red Tide. Vast swathes of those overtaken by the tide of lesser demons are swept away in a sea of blood. Few can stand against such assault, for the sight of their comrades cleaved in twain by the howling bloodletters is enough to shatter even the most resolute soldiers. Those warriors who neither perish instantly nor flee encounter furious wrath. Bloodletters scream madly and pounce with dark blades, teeth and claws. Delivering blows, the demons spit vile promises of death and suffering. The gruff voices of bloodletters instill terror in anyone who hears them. It is not uncommon for bloodletters to attack one another, competing to spill the most precious blood or to claim the skulls of the greatest warriors on the battlefield. In this way, each one strives to distinguish themselves in the eyes of heralds and their legion brethren, as well as in the eyes of the almighty Korn himself, Bloodcrusher, part of the shock cavalry of the demonic blood legions, a deadly combination of bloodletter rider and juggernaut steed. The demonic steeds of Korn are neither beast nor machine. They are nothing less than a demonic amalgam of both. This massive creation, whose flesh is of brass, muscles of iron, and instead of blood, fire. Their breath is fear, and each step is thunder. Juggernauts, ready to charge forward, emit a roar filled with the fury of thousands of dead souls. It is said they are the cruelest of all the blood god's demons. They are a reflection of their maker's aggression, his irresistible force and senseless violence. Only the chosen demonic servants of Korn are granted the opportunity to mount a juggernaut and ride it into battle. Such a venture is not for the faint-hearted. For the bloodletter must lead its chosen steed out of the stockade and hold on long enough to break the deadly charger. Many ambitious demons leap onto the back of an enraged juggernaut only to be thrown off and smashed into a pulp. Yet for those who succeed, the juggernaut becomes the deadliest of war steeds. A volley of small arms bounces harmlessly off its sides, only further inflaming the rage of the demonic beast. Only the heaviest weaponry can penetrate its armoured covering. By the time such arms are brought to bear, it is usually too late. When Korn's armoured cavalry thunders into attack, nothing can divert their course. Blood crushers with their wide heads held low and massive legs propelling them forward are like unstoppable rams embodying momentum. They carve their way through stone walls and steel barricades, not slowing down. They topple obstacles with showers of sparks, lowering their rough, blade-equipped heads before the collision. The very earth quakes in fear beneath the heavy tread of the demonic cavalry. Guided by their kill-seeking riders' bloodletters, they crush horror-stricken foes like gigantic hammers, flinging lifeless bodies in all directions and trampling any fool who dares to stand in their path. Juggernauts, drawn into battle, move through enemy ranks with the ease a mere mortal traverses tall grass. Each new kill drenches their legs in blood and remains. Goring with horns, disemboweling, tearing asunder with demonic teeth, these infernal steeds carve a path in close combat. The bloodletters perched upon their broad backs bring down their hell-forged blades in wide arcs, decapitating those still standing. Blood crushers take no prisoners and show no mercy. All who fall in their path serve as fodder for their insatiable thirst for slaughter. Blood crushers can be found in any army of corn, where they are used as a blunt wedge to breach enemy formations or assault fortifications. They are most numerous in the brazen thunder legions, consisting primarily of their cohorts, led by mounted heralds of corn known as Skullmasters. Any brave soul or fool who withstands their charge will be crushed under the ruthless bronze hooves of corn's cavalry. Entire tank regiments of the Astra Militarum are but trifles to them. The destructive force of the Blood Crusher's attack has leveled fortresses, demolished Exodite temples, and overthrown Imperial Knights. While a single group of Blood Crushers can annihilate an army, an entire legion of them can extinguish a world. 
flesh hounds, mighty and bloodthirsty demonic beasts at the service of the blood god. Hundreds and thousands of these creatures roam the bone-littered plains surrounding the domains of corn in the realm of chaos. Flesh hounds resemble colossal wolf-like beasts that hunt down and destroy the enemies of the blood god. They are often unleashed into real space to track down those who have incurred the wrath of corn. Relentless in the hunt, they can pursue their prey across vast, even interstellar distances. Their howl often drives their prey to madness before the razor-sharp teeth of the hound pierce flesh. The remains, especially their skulls, are dragged back to their unclean master to add to the countless number of other skulls. Madmen who have personally witnessed the unveiled horrors of the warp babble about the blood-red flesh hounds, whose furious howl haunts them in nightmares, and the memory of the beasts relentlessly persecutes them in wakefulness. The howl of a hound chills the heart, spreading icy tendrils of fear through the souls of mortals. They possess dense scaly hide, a blunt snout and sharp teeth. They roam the immaterium in packs, never rest, and are always on the hunt. Sometimes Corn summons them to the throne of skulls, as a master calls his dogs. He lets them scent the blood of doomed souls and releases them into the real world to hunt. Imperial navigators have reported hearing the howl of the hunting hounds when steering ships through the war. Likely, it is them the apocryphal tales recount. The ready brace and rogue trader Michael Rede. Unfortunately for the free merchant, aboard his vessel materialized a hound, which, by all accounts, was in search of one amongst the passengers. The hound ferociously carved its path through the ship and managed to kill hundreds of men before being brought down by the vessel's arch-militant and numerous gun servitors. Though they bear a remote resemblance to dogs, the flesh hounds are more a terrifying blend of canine and reptile. Covered in thick scales, they possess large horns and typically feature a row of spikes along their spine. Spikes protrude from various parts of their bodies, such as the back of their skulls, their necks, or beneath their jaws. Their color varies from dark red to gunmetal gray. Each flesh hound carries a copper chaos relic spiked, known as the Collar of Corn. This collar grants them protection against psychic energies so abhorred by their master. Leaping at the foe, the hound attempts to overpower the enemy with brute strength, fiercely attacking with its teeth and claws. Larger or well-armed enemies are surrounded by a multitude of hounds. Each flesh hound assaults the target from different directions, tormenting the enemy until they finally fall from exhaustion. Should the foe collapse, the pack pounces on them simultaneously to finally execute the kill. Flesh hounds typically hunt in packs and only the most well-armed and disciplined groups can hope to stand against them and survive the encounter. Flesh hounds are often seen fighting in the ranks of the demonic blood legions of Corn. Some are grouped into mobile units and vanguard squads, dispatched to scout enemy positions or fierce assaults on vulnerable targets. In the cohorts of the execution legions, particularly many packs of flesh hounds are found. The Heralds of Corn direct them to track special targets or launch mass attacks on enemy positions. By the whim of Corn, the demons of his kingdom partake in a grand tournament. Corn takes a demonic sword known as Kartoth, the Blood Hunger, capable of cleaving not just matter but also time. He then imbues one of his flesh hounds with it. The legions of Corn battle amongst themselves, slicing each other with swords and axes during the hunt for flesh hounds which in turn tear any nearby demon to pieces. The demon found bold, strong, or merely fortunate enough to slay the flesh hound with the demonic sword within, becomes the lord of the slaughter and is armed with the sword. Whether it be a day or an entire epoch, as decided by Korn, the lord of the slaughter enjoys a tremendous advantage in battle. When the feats of the lord of the slaughter bore Korn, he initiated the contest anew, the flesh hound consumes the sword along with its bearer, merging their essence into one whole. After which the demons begin to battle until Korn finds a new lord of the slaughter. Karanak, also called the Hound of Vengeance, is a unique flesh hound of Korn that embodies Korn's retribution. No one can hide from Korn's chosen flesh hound. Karanak hunts its prey across all of space and time, no matter where the quarry hides or how far it runs. 
When the hound is not hunting, it guards Corn's throne of brass. Unlike typical flesh hounds, Karanak has three heads, each tracking the prey in its way. The first head scouts the trail across space, the second searches for the victim through time, the third head, the most dangerous, senses the prey through thoughts and feelings, tracking them through dreams and illusions. This ensures that no prey can escape from Karanak. The most cunning, capable and technologically adept might remain unnoticed in time and space, but only a madman could outpace his mind. As Karanak moves on the trail, ploughing through realm after realm, its multiple dissonant roar echoes and resonate in the thoughts of its prey. Karanak's howl shakes space and time, leading the bloody hunt of corn. As the chase spans leagues and light years, a pack of bloodthirsty beasts, rumbling juggernauts, and battle-thirsty bloodletters gather around Karanak. Karanak and Korn's hunters strike with fangs, tearing everything in their path before reaching Blood God's quarry and rending it to pieces. The Blood Throne of Korn is a demonic machine in the form of a giant chariot used by the demons serving Korn. Typically it is led by a mighty herald of Korn favoured by his lord. The chariot is pulled by two bloodletters. The arrival of the Blood Throne can significantly boost the morale of the legion of demons and mortal servants of Korn. This demonic machine represents an ominous semblance of a mighty platform upon which Korn himself arrives in the realm of chaos. The Blood Throne rolls into battle on iron wheels, crushing and mutilating all who stand in its path. The bloody carnage that ensues following the engine's ignition is almost obscured by a choking cloud of acrid smoke from the exhaust, and the cries of the victims are barely heard over the mechanical sounds, the grinding of gears, the clanking of pistons, and the roar of the demonic furnace. The Blood Throne is a symbol of status, a physical embodiment of Korn's favour. It does not serve as a bastion of power, as might a similar throne in the armed forces of mortals, because the Herald does not try to command the numerous hordes of bloodletters fighting in his shadow. Even without the sharp scent of blood in the air, the demons of Korn are resolutely led into battle by their thirst for skulls and slaughter. Once the battle begins, a maniacal bloodlust turns bloodletters and heralds into frenzied beasts. They do not care for military tactics or strategy. Few can envision the countless acts of bloodshed and cruelty the Herald of Corn has committed to earn a place on the Blood Throne, for such unholy gifts are not easily won. Legend says that each Blood Throne is forged from a piece of brass taken from the sacred throne of the Blood God himself, imbued with a shard of his own eternally boiling rage. Whether truth or fiction one cannot deny, these demonic vessels are among the proudest and most malevolent demonic engines in service to Corn. Only the heralds known as Renmasters possess the will to rein in their murderous fury. Standing atop the throne, they neither sit idly nor rest as others might in their place. Instead, they pace restlessly upon the throne as their chariot moves, their eyes and tongues twitching madly in anticipation of the next kill. To Korn, all blood in his eyes is equal, yet this does not extend to the skulls of the slain. The skulls of cowards are fed to the ominous mechanisms of the blood throne. Fire consumes them and feeds fresh power to the demonic machine. The skulls of true warriors the Herald claims for himself. They are then melted down into the very throne, becoming an eternal reminder of the futility of resisting the will of corn. Thus, on the oldest blood thrones lie side by side the skulls of Space Marine Chapter Masters, Drukhari Archons of Komora, and the war bosses of the Orc race. The Skull Cannon of Korn is a demonic engine in the form of a massive chariot, used by the demons, servants of Korn. It features a large armoured weapon mounted atop the chassis of a chariot known as the Blood Throne. Chained to this machine are two lesser demons of Korn, known as Bloodletters. Skull Cannons fire the flaming skulls of those whom the servants of Korn have incinerated on the battlefield. The projectiles themselves scream as they fly towards the enemy. The massive weapon is covered in ribbed plating and decorative details, such as metal skulls and teeth, with the front of the machine resembling a ferocious gaping maw. In the Black Library of Chaos, there are records of demonic skull cannons, 
war machines forged in the furnaces at the foot of the throne of the blood god. These demon engines are so gruesome and murderously effective that some inquisitors of the Ordo Maleus believe them to be crafted by the hand of Korn himself. Like the juggernauts, the skull cannons are a monstrous amalgam of demonic spirit and hell-forged construction. The skull cannon scarcely needs inspiration for sound and slaughter. The bound demon within its black heart is as enraged and bloodthirsty as any other servant of Korn. The skull cannons are even more willful and proud than the wildest of juggernauts, so little do they care for the beings tied to their mechanical majesty. On the battlefield, skull cannons grind their enemies to dust, and their spiked wheels crush everything in their path. Those immediately crushed by the thundering machine can consider themselves fortunate. The others, maimed and broken, are sent screaming into the gaping maw of the skull cannon, within which they are roasted by demonic fire and ground into pieces. Most of the remains are ejected from the rear of the skull cannon, leaving behind a red trail of bone shards and blood. Only the skulls remain, fleshless and scorched, but otherwise intact. The infinite and unquenchable wrath of the blood god pours into them until their empty eye sockets bleed tears of blood and their gaping jaws begin to babble furiously. Only then does the skull cannon, with a rumbling thunder, fire a projectile named after itself from its main weapon. The flame-engulfed skulls cackle malevolently as they fly towards the target, crashing into enemy positions, burning their shelters and leaving a scorched trail of fiery death. The Bloodthirster is a greater demon of corn, embodying reckless fury and the cruelty of total war. It is said that there are no mightier masters of combat in the entire galaxy, for none can stand against the greater demons of the Blood God. They are the very essence of ruthlessness. The quintessence of every strike delivered and life taken in anger, now manifested as a towering bulwark of iron and muscle. As living embodiments of war, rage and death, bloodthirsters reflect the bloodiest aspect of war and are known as the greatest warriors of all demonic kind. Only the bravest heroes among mortal champions have a slim chance of surviving a battle with a bloodthirster and an even smaller chance of emerging victorious. Most of these beings stand about 10 meters tall, but the mightiest among them can reach the size of a scout titan. Their hides are covered in red fur, the color of spilled blood, and their eyes are milky white with no visible iris or pupil. Many have hooves, and the ground beneath their stride begins to burn. The bodies of the greater demons are incredibly muscular and covered in spikes with iron tips. From their backs protrude a pair of giant membranous wings like those of bats, allowing them to soar above the battlefield and descend into the fiercest bloody parts of the battle, striking wherever they please. Most terrifying of all are their faces. They are beast-like, almost canine, embodying the appearance of Korn's most favoured creations in the universe. Bloodthirsters wear ancient, ornately decorated armour. Parts of their armour are adorned with a glowing sign of Korn in the shape of a skull, as a sign of his blessing. The armour is made of reddish bronze or black iron, upon which glowing red runes of Korn are inscribed, protecting against the most dreadful psychic attacks, a fact that instills terror in the hearts of the most experienced psychers. The armor of bloodthirsters also shields them from the ranged weapons of cowards who attempt to strike them down from a distance, rather than engaging in honorable close combat. The greater demons of Korn wield two primary weapons that are embodiments of slaughter. The first is a massive demonic battle axe, forged in the inferno of Korn's wrath and imbued with the essence of greater demons trapped within. Its sharp blade is no less in length than the height of a space marine, with a hilt several times longer. These axes, capable of cleaving an armoured battle tank in two, are perhaps the mightiest weapons ever crafted. This terrifying weapon not only devastates the physical form of an enemy, but often consumes his soul as well. The second weapon is a long, serrated whip, capable of delivering a deadly blow at a distance. It allows a murder-obsessed greater demon to strike foes from afar. While it does not provide the same satisfaction as cleaving an enemy with an axe, the whip enables the reach and destruction of even the swiftest and most agile of foes. However, bloodthirsters are not mere mindless feral war machines. 
They are generals and the greatest champions of the demonic legions of the Blood God. Countless lesser demons march in their shadow, launching unrestrained attacks on their enemies. Bloodthirsters excel in any tactics that lead to bloodshed. They shun stealth and cunning as manifestations of cowardice, directing their forces towards the total defeat of their enemies with staggering brutality. Among the demonic legions of Khorne are eight distinct ranks of bloodthirsters. Yet, it would be a deadly mistake to consider greater demons of the lowest eighth rank any less formidable as warriors than their brethren, or to assume they pose a lesser threat. In essence, only those well-versed in demonic lore are aware of the existence of various ranks of bloodthirsters, since to mortals they all appear equally deadly and devastating on the battlefield. Regardless, bloodthirsters of each of the eight ranks possess their lethal abilities, weapons and titles. The demons of the eighth rank, for example, are known as bloodthirsters of unfettered fury. The capabilities of these monstrous entities make them adept generals, and they are armed with the infamous combination of axe and whip. Most often, it is the bloodthirsters of unfettered fury that lead the demonic legions of corn into assault upon the real worlds. Compared to them, the demons of the sixth rank, known as bloodthirsters of insensate rage, are berserker destroyers wielding gigantic axes the size of fortress gates. Nothing on the battlefield can withstand such horrors and the demons of corn instinctively follow in the wake of their blazing fury. In their chests burn the forges of corn, igniting their rage to a state of frenzy. The infamous demons of the third rank are called Wrath of Corn. These beings are flame-breathing braggarts, glory hunters who revel in the humiliation of the greatest heroes of the enemy and their brutal slaughter in honour of their blood lord. These haughty hunters fulfil their sacred duty the debasement of the mightiest heroes, and their ruthless murder. Here are several of the most renowned bloodthirsters. Arngrath the Unbound, the most powerful among them, and the favourite servant of the Blood God. The last time he was banished from the material world was during the Siege of Vrax in the year 830 of the 41st millennium. Scarbrand the Exiled One Once the greatest general of Khorne, and the strongest among all bloodthirsters, he was cast out by the Skull Lord for his betrayal. Deceived by the machinations of Tzinch, the Lord of Change, Khorne exiled him from his realm. Anak Hadnron, a demon who became part of the demonic militia of the followers of all four Chaos Gods. Leading a cohort of bloodletters, he followed his Lord, the Herald of Khorne, named Deathrender, in his military campaign, Anka Arak. This bloodthirster led a Chaos invasion on the Imperial world of Taurus, in the year 579 of the 41st millennium. He conquered this world and ruled the occupied planet for 300 Terran years before being pulled back into the Empyrean. Axakan, one of the eight bloodthirsters in service to Gallicra the Infernus. His subordinate bloodthirster Kulzar led one of the demonic blood legions of Khorne, which included the infamous cohort known as the Doom Court. This cohort took part in the Blood Crusade and participated in the battle on the surface of the fortress world Alexandrum during the war for the Attila system. Belenoth was a grand demon of corn sealed within the damnation cache on the world of Pythos after the Horus heresy. Closer to the end of the 41st millennium, the forces of Chaos freed him, but soon after he was banished again by the Catacan jungle fighters. Galokra the Infernus, commander of one of the demonic armies, master of Axachan, who commands eight supreme generals of bloodthirsters, each leading their blood legions. Kabanda, one of the greatest bloodthirsters and eternal enemy of the space marines of the Blood Angels chapter and their successor chapters. He and his legions saved Baal in the final year of the 41st millennium. The Leviathan Hive Fleet nearly destroyed Baal, but at the moment of the Great Rift's formation in the year 999 of 41st millennium, he and his demons annihilated all Tyranids amidst the warp storm. The right to collect the skulls of the Blood Angels is reserved only for Kabanda. Herald of Khorne is an elite bloodletter, a lesser demon. Cohorts of the demonic blood legions are precisely led by Heralds of Khorne. These sinister grinning figures of hellish torment were imbued with life. Whether marching at the head of their demonic warriors or charging into battle atop a juggernaut in their presence, the demons of Khorne fight even more ferociously. Heralds of Khorne are the strongest and the most cruel bloodletters, 
chosen from their ranks by the blood god himself. Rumours abound that once chosen, the nascent heralds are dispatched to clash against one another within the vast arena of the Brass Citadel in the realm of chaos, called Skull Pit. Here they are made to partake in the trial of champions to discard the unworthy. The energy of the fallen is seized by corn and bestowed upon the remainder. Thus the victor becomes imbued with strength, and the Hellblade, having absorbed a portion of this newfound power, henceforth becomes known as the Blade of Blood. Its bearers are also granted a title befitting their merits and preferred modus of warfare. Be it a Bloodmaster, Skullmaster, Sacred Executioner, Renmaster, or any other herald type, each is a ferocious warrior, leading the demons of Khorne to execute the will of their ruling Bloodthirster. To those heralds who have committed acts of particular outstanding violence, the title of Bloodmaster is bestowed. These frenzied masters of combat joyously sever the heads of their quarry and plunge the screaming blade of blood deep into the pounding hearts of their foes. A Bloodmaster cannot merely succumb to their desire to slaughter, for the prime duty of a herald on the battlefield is to direct the fray. To this end, these demonic champions imbue the demons of their cohort with a measure of their ageless malice, igniting an inner bloodlust in their minions to unimaginable potency. Among the Heralds of Corn are those gifted with the ability to lead the charges of demonic cavalry. They relish the sensation of skulls shattered beneath bronzed hooves and thunder into the very inferno of battle seeking the most worthy of enemies. These champions are known as Skull Masters, embodying the force of absolute devastation on the battlefield. Skull Masters, mounted upon juggernauts, steeds of living bronze and boiling blood, are often found at the head of the cohorts of the Brazen Thunder Legion. Among the Heralds of Corn, notable ones include the Huntsman, an immense fierce bloodletter known for his blazing hatred towards psychers. Only Corn and some of his greatest champions despise sorcerers more intensely. Wherever an especially bothersome psyker crosses Corn's path, the Huntsman is directed to unleash Corn's wrath upon them. The Blood God has gifted him a pack of dreadful flesh hounds capable of tracking prey even through the warp. A psyker marked by the Huntsman is doomed to eternal pursuit. Kashanka leads a grouping of demonic engines known as the Crimson Destroyers. As punishment for disobedience, he was made the commander of a fire support squad, even though he could have led an assault in battle. He took part in the siege of the Fenris system in 999, M41, alongside the bloodthirster Vorhak. Rakshas Sundersword is a notoriously fearsome warrior within the demonic armies of the Blood God. He broke through the offensive line of Slanesh's wanton jaunt during the War of Seven Chimes and decapitated the orc war boss Golg on Meraxia. Though he cannot be called a cunning strategist, he is a lethal adversary in combat and a decisive leader of his cohort. Skulltaker, also known as Uzul, is a herald, granted a demonic steed named Kultiran, a juggernaut. Korn himself proclaimed him the Blood God's own sacred executioner. Often, he leads the war into battle at the forefront of the Blood Cohort, the mightiest of bloodletters chosen from the ranks of the demonic legions. The mere presence of the Herald on the battlefield plunges the lower-ranking demons into utter ecstasy. For all bloodletters esteem him as the finest of their kind, and the epitome of all that the bloodthirsty god demands from them. In the heat of battle, Skulltaker always seeks out the most powerful warriors of the enemy. Upon spotting a worthy opponent, he will slaughter all those standing between him and his prey, disdainfully cleaving his way through the throng in close combat, to confront the chosen enemy face to face in a ritual duel. Those who decide to flee are immediately cut down or beheaded without hesitation by Skulltaker. Those brave or foolhardy enough to accept the roaring challenge of the Champion of Corn meet an even worse fate. It is said that when Corn created Uzul, he immediately beheaded the first being he encountered, another bloodletter, greatly delighting Corn. Thus was born the beheading that spread terror in all mortal and immortal universes. When the bloodletter claimed his 888th skull, God transported the rising champion to his skull pit, where all of Corn's bloodletter champions were tested. 
Uzul proved unbeaten, decapitating every opponent, sustaining mere scratches in return. In recognition of his achievement, Korn not only proclaimed him the Blood God's own sacred executioner, but also granted him a unique title, Skull Taker. The energies of the warp enlarged his body and empowered his Hellblade, turning it into the Slayer Sword, a terrifying weapon capable of slicing through reinforced ceramite and slaying even the most monstrous creatures with a single blow. Since his ascension, the Champion of Korn has carved a bloody path through the millennia. He fought alongside the Primarch Angren on Armageddon, where several brothers of the Grey Knights fell victim to his endless fury. On Agrippinia VI, he slew an orc Grimsnag Urk in a titanic duel that lasted a solar day and night after cutting down the heavily armoured bodyguard of the Greenskin Warlord. Twenty Eldari Exarchs fell to his blade during the battles on Haran Shemash. Even their astonishing abilities and experience were insufficient to overcome the Herald. Every race in the galaxy harbours terrifying legends featuring Skulltaker and his ghastly deeds. Kul Tiran, the legendary juggernaut steed belonging to Skulltaker. Though the Herald prefers to fight alone, he sometimes mounts this beast. By the time Skulltaker claimed the creature from the infernal forges of Korn, Kul Tiran had been the most obstinate demonic steed. The demon beast had slain more of its kind than any other. The steed constantly twisted and turned along the fence, seeking an escape to freedom. One day, Kulturan shattered the wall of his pen and might have fled, if not for a dozen heralds of corn who brought him back. Skulltaker singled out the beast from the herd when he saw it slay three heralds with a single thrust of its horns. Since then, these two periodically emerge from the warp to harvest skulls for the blood god. Kinslayer, a notoriously infamous herald of corn. Even against the backdrop of other bloodletters, he displays a particularly exceptional knack for destruction, thus earning the recognition of corn and becoming one of his heralds. Kinslayer is one of the most powerful heralds of corn, acting upon the world named Crucible in the Calixis sector, inside the warp rift known as the Screaming Vortex. He constantly seeks foes who serve the other ruinous powers, providing his followers with limitless opportunities to use their wrath to actively weaken the other chaos forces. He also had a habit of intentionally driving a vast number of mortal souls into battle, where they could share in the joy of combat through agonizing wounds. Some believe that Kinslayer receives blessings from the Lord of Rage for every demonic skull he brings to his master. Others look upon his dominion with malevolence, believing that those who swear allegiance to other dark gods make themselves targets for Kinslayer. Such are the blood legions, blood for the blood god, skulls for the skull throne. A brutal force beyond reality, biding its time, feeding on your anger, fury, and spite. Do not seek power in this deity, for you will merely leave it your skull.